In the last video, we saw how we could essentially reverse the chain rule of differentiation by making substitutions when we see a power of a function and its derivative appearing within the integrand of an integral. We'll see in this video that it's not just powers of functions that we can apply the same method to. In fact, quite often when we see something that we would have used the chain rule to differentiate in order to achieve, we can reverse it using a substitution. So we know basic rules now for exponentials and trig functions and a couple of others for when we're trying to integrate them. But sometimes there's something that's just a little bit more complicated than that. So for example, if we were to try to integrate the function e to the x, we can just use the rule straight away and say it's e to the x plus c. But what about the slightly more complicated e to the 3x plus 2, where the 3x plus 2 is itself a function that makes this function or integrand not quite fit the rule that we saw back in the first video. Well, again, if we see a function like that and its derivative, or something very close to it, within a constant multiple, then if we see that in the integrand, we can use a change of variable or a substitution again to proceed with the integration. And we're going to see how this works for a few integrals uh, on the next few examples, but basically they all follow the same sort of uh, procedure. So here's three examples that we're going to look at. First of all, x times e to the x squared then x divided by 16 minus x to the 2, and then finally 3x squared times sine of x cubed plus 3. Now without actually even going into these, I'm first just going to look at them and see if they fit into the right sort of format. Maybe pause for a second and see if you can see a function and its derivative appearing in each of these integrands. In the first example, a, what I notice is that I've got an exponential and I know a rule for the exponential to x, but not x squared. So what I can think of this as is e to the u, where u is the function x squared. u then would have a derivative, which is equal to 2x. Now notice that in the integrand, we've got an x sitting there as well. Now x is just a constant multiple of 2x, so we've actually got e to the u and u's derivative appearing in there. Similarly, in the next example, 16 minus x squared the function on the bottom, we can think of that as u. The derivative of u would be minus 2x. Minus 2x and x are just constant multiples of each other. And finally, when we've got 3x squared times sine of a function, think of that function inside the brackets as our u. u equals x cubed plus 3. So the derivative of u would be 3x squared. And we've got exactly that sitting out in the front. So all of these are examples of the types of functions we can use a substitution to solve, or to find the integrals. So first of all, we've got the integral of x times e to the x squared, with respect to x. I'm going to go off to the side and say let u equal x squared, so du dx equals 2x. And then we can do our little rearrange trick and show, say that 2x dx is equal to du. Now notice over here we've got an x dx, not 2x dx. So we could say that half of du is equal to x dx if we rearrange uh, this equation right here. So we can go back to our integral and say that we've got the integral of e to the u because u is x squared. And then a half du is x dx, so we've got one half du. Or a half out the front, because it's a constant multiple, times the integral of e to the u du. And now we can use our rule for the exponential and just say that that's a half of e to the u plus a constant. And to clean it up, we replace the u with its x form. So we have a half e to the x squared plus c. And of course, as usual with integrals, you can differentiate that result to check that you've got the right answer and attempt to get the integrand back again. And you'll find that it's correct. In our next example, we've got to integrate x over 16 minus x squared. Why don't you have a go yourself and try to figure out what you would let u be, and then figure out the derivative and try to arrive at the replacement for dx in terms of du. So let's pause for a second. Okay, so I decided to let u be 16 minus x squared because I could see its derivative is minus 2x 
and I've got an x sitting up here, which is roughly the derivative within a constant multiple. So u is 16 minus x squared, du dx is minus 2x, and I want to rearrange this to get an expression that will replace x dx and write it in terms of du's, and that's exactly what we've got there. So back to my integral, I have that that's equal to x dx becomes minus a half du, and I've got 1 over u because 16 minus x squared is a u. So then I've got minus a half. The integral of 1 on u is log u, but remember u is 16 minus x squared. So I can replace that, and then I've got a plus c. So that's my re result there by substitution. Again, because I see a function and its derivative appearing in the integrand. The final example is where we're going to integrate 3x squared by sine x cubed plus 3. All with respect to x. Now again, we've got a function inside the sine, which is making it a bit tricky. We can't use the sine integral rule there because we've got a function. The derivative of that function is appearing completely outside. So this one's going to be a bit easier again. So let u equal x cubed plus 3. So du dx is 3x squared, which is exactly what we've got there. So in other words, we can make a direct replacement. du is going to be 3x squared dx. So our integral becomes the integral of sine of u, and 3x squared dx we replace with du. So we can use our rule for the integral of sine and get that it's minus cos of u, plus a constant, and finally replace u with its x function form. So it's minus cos x cubed plus 3 plus a constant. So there we have another example of, of uh, integration by substitution. Again, remember it's always going to have the case that we have a function that is sort of messing us up a bit that we can't use a rule. If that function's derivative also appears in the integrand, then we can try substitution to see if it works. And remember, you can always check your answer by differentiating it to see if you get the integrand again. So that's it for this week's videos. And what you should try now is to read section 5.3 of the text, or any other text where you can check out a section on integration by substitution. And you can also attempt a heap of exercises from the worksheets, the text, or other text if you like. And there's also bunches of stuff about integration by substitution on a lot of websites that you can find on the internet.